second half housing. Looking for a place to settle down the rest of your life? Everyone does sooner or later. They want their own little place in the sun, a dream house, a view, a heartwarming climate, no more storm clouds, only sunshine and happiness the rest of the days of their lives. And some are successful in this search and find they can sink their roots into an entirely new region and live happily ever after. But others find their search leads them right back up the same old pathway, back to their very own doorstep, among the people they've lived with and loved all these many years. The old house and the old neighborhood hold a lot of memories for them, and it's pretty hard to just turn the key and walk out on such pleasures from the past. This is Jack Shelley from Iowa State University asking you to take a look at your past and then on into your future. What are your plans for the second half of your life? Is the house you're living in now the one you'd like to live in the rest of the days of your life? Or are you on the search for your next special place in the sun? Actually, if we take a look at our past history, we find that not very many of us leave our own home territory when we retire. Only one in a hundred of us move out of the state. But the picture is changing with more and more retirement type communities luring us to the warmer sections of our country. Oh, it's really great out here. We like it especially in the winter time when we think about all you folks back home knee deep in snow. Yeah, we really like the people here. They're from all over the United States and, and you know they have about the same interests we do. There's golf, bridge, visiting. Yeah, it's, it's really pretty nice. We went down and looked, and we liked the climate, we liked the people, and we just liked Arkansas. My folks retired to Florida ten years ago. Of course, we go down and see them every winter and spend some time there. In fact, we'll probably move down there too when we retire. Of course, we have a lot of retirement moves made right within the borders of our own state. Here's one couple who chose a mobile home for such a move. Why? Our children live over here, and, and one of them was a minister, and the other one was in college, so we didn't feel they were perfectly settled, so we wanted to be able to move if they should move, because we didn't know any over, anyone over here. And then, too, as you know, many people will move from where they live, and they'll get into area, and they won't be happy, but they're tied down. What can they do? And we wanted to be sure that we would find our church here, and we wanted to be sure we would like the town. And if not, then we could move. Some of the most common retirement moves in our agricultural state are the moves from farm to town. In making such a move, you're often able to stay in the same neighborhood as your children. And this way, you have the pleasure of seeing your grandchildren grow up. And really, grandparents are great for children they can pass along some of their skills and philosophy to young, attentive ears. I've learned if you put things off uh, and think, well, now I'm going to do that when I get older. Unless you have learned to do it when you were young, you're not going to be able to learn to do it as you get, when you get older either. Some people are not as interested in garden and yard work as this woman, and as their children grow up and leave home, well, they're willing to leave the mowing, the raking, and the snow shoveling to somebody else. And this is one advantage that condominium owners have, that plus some decided financial advantages. But it would appear there are two advantages. In the initial cost, they have less investment in land. In other words, the units take up about the same space as one large single dwelling lot. And so I think we probably obtained more square footage within the dwelling itself for the same price. Also, the taxes would seem to be significantly less 
than in a single family dwelling. And with the tax advantage of the mortgage and interest payments, uh, then uh, this makes it much better at the end of the tax year. Or for even more carefree existence, there's always apartment living. Here the landlord has all the upkeep, inside and outside. Well, it's much easier, and if you make up your mind, you can be just as happy in an apartment as you can a home. I think uh, I wouldn't want to try to raise a family in an apartment building. But uh, when you get back to where you started, just the two of you, there are a lot of responsibilities you can shuck by getting going from the house to an apartment. I like the advantage of when we get ready to go, uh, take a trip or take a vacation, all we have to do is lock the doors. Apartment-like living is also available in retirement clusters. Some of these are called villages, some are known as retirement communities, and some retirement homes. But they all have pretty much the same purpose, to provide comfortable, carefree living quarters for those in their retirement years. Now here's one, located in one of the more rural areas of the state. Along with its peaceful country setting, it seems to have a more relaxed atmosphere. We asked the manager at what age people start moving into retirement homes. Unfortunately, they wait too long. Understandably, I can see possibly why having a nice home is difficult to make a decision on leaving it, breaking away from their home. But uh, I would say that to the experiences that we have had here that we're talking in the 70s or over before uh, this decision is actually made. And how do you judge a retirement home, either for yourself or for your parents, if that's the case? Well, the ultimate, uh, I can say, uh, in uh, retirement or nursing is to have a home. Uh, and again, here I would consider myself probably as being the most forcey administrator probably in the state of Iowa of a very dedicated staff. And uh, by dedication, I mean people who truly love people and people who can afford to give tender, loving care. Uh, this is the essence of, uh, of any home, to be able to afford tender, loving care and a true love for everyone. Of course, the facilities of the home are important, too. And although many of them provide the basic furniture, it's the extras the residents bring with them that make this new place feel like home. Many residents have a few things uh, that are very close to them, and uh, we feel then that if they have a favorite chair or a few things like this that they would like to take along with them, uh, we make an allowance for this, as long as the room isn't overcrowded. Our local paper has been uh, very kind in uh, giving us much publicity. We also have a uh, full page in our uh, local paper of Prairie View News that is printed every week. One of our residents happens to be the editor. Of every Friday afternoon we have bingo. That's of course is, is really the day. Uh, everyone is uh, so uh, wrapped up in their bingo, a prize is given to them. Uh, we usually give fruit or, and then on the blackout the man will get a special prize, the lady will get a special prize. And uh, it is one probably of the most favorite activities that we do have. And just because this retirement home is located in the country town, it's not just retired farm folk who move here. Far from it. There are many former city dwellers here, too. We have, uh, I think, uh, attracted uh, the people of the city area or more distant area primarily because uh, they have connections or ties in this particular area. They maybe have a son or a daughter or something who's living in this area, and uh, the son would like to have mother as close as possible, and uh, so it is uh, through this that we have uh, attracted them. Now let's look at a city retirement center. The view is certainly different, 
but the people are still pretty much the same. This is a public housing center built for older persons. It has no health care facilities. Consequently, the atmosphere is a bit different. There's younger clientele and a busy schedule for those who wish to partake of it. For instance, there are classes for those who wish to keep up with their working skills. There was a regular class for beginners and uh, uh, those that had typed before and uh, it was a review for me because I wanted to keep up on my speed. I had had uh, typing in my former job. A number of the seamstresses in this class are old hands at sewing and some are just beginners. One of the women told about one of her classmates' accomplishments as just a beginning seamstress. She never had done any sewing and always bought her dresses and she got her machine Never had operated a machine before. She made her a very nice, just common dress, but it was very nicely done. She done wonderful. Classes are pinpointed to special needs as well. Extension service food aids come in weekly to help those who are on diabetic diets to learn more about food and to try a few new combinations for a change. Though no meals are served to residents of this center, the kitchen is available for classes such as this or for group meals that residents themselves might prepare and serve. Laundry facilities are available on each floor on a pay-as-you-wash plan. Dryers as well as washers are, of course, a part of the equipment. And naturally, the residents themselves think up other things to do. Some have mutual interests that draw them together socially. Their apartment-sized living rooms can really handle quite a crowd. Of course, there are different sized apartments available. The choice is yours. This is a two-bedroom size. But rather than group activity, some prefer solitude with their own pleasures. And this, of course, they can have with their own apartments and their own furnishings. And some outside provisions are made, too. For those who've enjoyed their own gardens before moving to the center, they can keep right on enjoying this. They can have their own little plot right out and back. Of course, the planting, the weed pulling, and the harvesting, they're all left to them, just the way it probably was back home. There are many who take pride in the way the center appears to others, and a little beauty spot out front is a cooperative project of those who really want to show that they're pretty proud of their new home. And the space out for uh, horseshoes and they didn't have it filled in, and so uh, we uh, went to see if we could put flowers there instead. We, it looks better with the flowers out there, I think. Homes such as this are often located far from shopping areas and other places where people need to go. And since most of the residents don't drive, how to provide transportation has been a concern. But here's how some federal funding has been able to help out with this problem in a typically rural area of the state. We received a grant from the Commission on Aging to establish transportation programs for the elderly in our area. Uh, we are using the volunteers from the local churches. Each church has been providing volunteers for a period of a month at a time. And we also have some clubs and organizations that are interested in taking a uh, month at the project. The number of rides these volunteers give around 50 a month. And here's the one who makes this program tick. A person who is without transportation, who lives alone, calls me and asks if they might go to a certain place like the bank, grocery stores, beauty parlors, or to pay bills, places like this, and would I furnish a driver for them? Could I find someone? and find someone she does, among the 20 to 25 people who volunteer as drivers each month. 
Yes, small towns are trying to keep their citizens comfortable and safe in their own homes as long as possible. What about cities? Are they as concerned too? Some definitely are and are doing something about it. We became aware quite early that transportation was a major problem of older people and related to it then a lot of other things. It was a transportation, lack of transportation made it hard for them to get the health care they needed. It kept them isolated. It made it hard for them to participate in other community activities. All these things are related. They call our office and um, Iola uh, answers the phone and then they tell us when they need a ride and we schedule them for uh, a pickup at the time that they need it to get where they're going. We don't charge for our rides. It was designed and intended to be a free service for the elderly. We have a grant from the Commission on Aging which provides basically the uh, funds to pay our driver. Uh, our cars are furnished by two local car dealers. Several filling stations in the community contribute uh, 10 gallons of gas a month, uh, and a few others give us a discount on gas. There are organizations, clubs and groups in the city that contribute money to us. We also then match funds with it from our project concern budget, which in turn comes from the city council and the uh, county supervisors. With programs such as these, perhaps more will be able to stay in their own homes longer. Or is that house you're living in now the one you want to live in the rest of your life? If it is, then it should be pretty well age-proof. Take a good look at it. Can you really say it's convenient and safe for everyday living, especially as you get older? And what about the extras your house demands of you? Do they keep you tied right there? And how long will you be able to meet those demands? And will your house accommodate your future needs, regardless of what they might be? Check it out and see. What can you do to make living more convenient for your retiring years? We've asked that question of Naomi Shank, who has recently retired as a housing specialist at Iowa State University. What's convenient and safe for older folks is usually more convenient for younger ones, too. So even if you're building a new house and you're in your 30s or 40s, these features make living more comfortable. First, just keep everyday living needs on one floor level. This eliminates many unnecessary steps, both for the young and the old. But where you do have steps, handrails are a must, and two are better than one. No matter which side of the steps you're on, there's always support for that free hand. However, if you should need to use a walker or a wheelchair, can you replace at least one of the entryway steps with a ramp? For easy use, a rise of about one inch and every foot gives a comfortable incline. Inside the house, work centers at a comfortable height and storage at fingertip reach is important. That's one reason for having the first cupboard shelf not more than 15 inches from the top of the counter. Then using adjustable shelves in cupboards can bring other shelves lower. A height for sit down work is good for all ages. It takes far less energy, it changes the body position, and is more relaxing to sit to do some jobs than to stand. For wheelchair use, you should be able to move the chair right under the counter so you can reach tools and supplies. Then there is lighting. Dimming eyesight calls for increased light, free of shadows and glare. Consider lights over the range as well as the placement of the controls. If they're in front, you won't need to reach over hot pans to get to them. For the same reason, staggered cooking units might be worth shopping for. Then another safety thought, the one control lever for hot and cold water service. This is easier to operate, not only in the kitchen, but in the bathroom as well. As a rule, showers are easier for older folks to use than bathtubs. Grab bars steady your balance in the shower, and if you tub bathe, they do help in easing the body down into the tub and pulling it back up. A handheld shower head is nice to use, especially from a sitting position. The route to the bathroom and bedrooms 
needs to be wide enough so walkers and wheelchairs can be easily used, at least 36 inches wide. Remember that high pile and sculptured carpeting is difficult for most older people to walk on, and it's almost impossible for wheelchair use, especially combined with a thick, spongy pad. A low to medium height pile with a firm pad makes for much easier wheeling or walking. Other ideas that are worth thinking about, the height of outlets. Those a couple feet above the baseboard are easily used without stooping or crawling under furniture and much easier to reach from a wheelchair. Another hard to reach work area has been window washing. Newer styles in windows are featuring these easier to wash ideas. Then just one last parting thought. Portable extra heating devices can be real safety hazards. Think about installing supplementary heat that will give needed warmth without being a tripping hazard. So if you're planning to build or buy a house for your retirement years ahead, or to make changes in your present one, then it's wise to keep ideas like these in mind. Let's introduce you now to a couple who did build following retirement and who used ideas like these in their plans. In this case, both are retired, Lucille from a position on the East Coast and Chuck, a former postmaster. You can wheel your chair right in because this house was planned for wheelchairs or for any other handicap they might encounter in their retiring years. Lucille tells about it. One of our biggest and most difficult decisions in terms of building a house for our retirement years was where should it be. We debated whether we should stay in Iowa or try one of the southern states. We finally decided that perhaps we should stay where our roots are. We felt we wanted to keep on our feet and walking as long as we could and therefore we wanted to be close to such things as the, the churches, the grocery stores, the courthouse, the post office, the banks and that sort of thing, and not be dependent on a car every time we moved. We liked long vistas, but we decided we should stay near the center of town instead of going to the outskirts. We liked these long views, and you see the bay windows lets us look out in three directions. The sliding glass doors, which are behind me here, help to take the inside out and the outside in. This lamp hung in my grandparents' house in the country, outside of Decorah, so did this other lamp. I'm making use of them because we like the feeling of bringing part of our heritage along with us. Here we are in the cooking end of our family room. You see this is an island in the middle of a U-shaped kitchen. Behind us there is a white sink that's white on purpose. Because we're told as our eyes grow older and eyesight is dimmer, one can see what one is doing better against a white surface. We call this a his and her kitchen because it's so planned that two people can work in it at the same time. I maintain I'm retired too, so I welcome help with the meals. Our slogan in planning this kitchen was, reach, don't walk. In other words, everything is within easy reach. And one of the things we like about our planning was that all the doors above the work counter space slide instead of swinging out where you might hit your head on them. All the drawers below the work counter pull out so you don't lose something in the back because you can't reach it. And if you have a tedious job, which you can sit down to do, we have a low shelf we can pull out. Then you can pull up a chair, reach for your utensils, and sort of rest while you're doing the preparation of food. Now this is the other end of our family room. It's all wide open. So we can even stand at the cook stove and watch the television news or whatever we're watching. We expect to spend many hours in the rest of our lives right here in the family room. And we've furnished it with a number of things that have come down to us through our families. The roll top desk was my father's. And uh, as far back as I remember, it was his desk in our home. This clock was hanging on the wall of the house which stood on this precise location. This gives us a feeling of continuity with our own past life. All doors are wide enough to accommodate a wheelchair if that should be necessary. What might be called a master bedroom is two bedrooms with an adjoining bath. 
Here we can use our elbow with a little punch in case your hands are wet. It opens the medicine cabinet over our bowls. Here is the shower in this bathroom because sometimes a bathtub is not the best thing for an older person or isn't easy to get in and out of. But we also have a tub. It's equipped with handrails securely attached to the wall, a high handrail, and then a lower grab rod. And the bottom of this tub is slightly roughened so one can stand on it comfortably or get out without danger of slipping. Now we're moving into the other bedroom, which is Chuck's. We don't have to have dressers and much furniture because there's plenty of storage space, drawer space, and all of it can easily be seen and reached. We have loudspeakers throughout the house, including the deck and the porches, so we can live with music. Now this is a music player. Chuck is pulling it out of a central storage wall and with this sound piped through the house you can go on and listen to news without having to stop what you're doing let me explain this storage wall it runs almost the length of the house and has various kinds of storage space built in on both sides of it here you see a bookcase above the music player down further my laundry is located right off from the family room on the same level as the rest of the house I don't have to take any steps up or down. And a little further down the hall, I'm opening the two doors to my cleaning equipment closet. They open wide so things can be brought out easily. And it's right in the center of house so you don't have to drag the vacuum for a long distance. This we call the guest wing of the house. One reason that we planned the guest wing as we did was that we might someday need some outside help, either housekeeper or nurse, and this would provide nice living quarters for someone who might come in to take care of us. And if you're going out for the evening, you toss on your coat, you go down the carpeted stairs with a handrail, a bend part way down, so in case you should trip, you won't fall the whole distance. From this, we step out into the heated garage and the door opens at the touch of a button. I tell you, we really enjoy this house. We found it comfortable and efficient, and that gives us a measure of time and energy that we can devote to matters of real concern in our community. Yes, be it ever so humble or ever so magnificent, there's no place like home. And in this modern world of mobile living, who knows where home's going to be? But if you plan to stay right where you are now, ask yourself, how adaptable is this house to my later years, regardless of what my needs may be? And can I really keep up with the work it demands? It's something to think about before you reach retirement age. Besides, now is a good time to look around and see if there's another spot you'd like better than the one you're in right now. It may take road searching and soul searching to find your own special place in the sun. tell you we really enjoy this house we found it comfortable and efficient and that gives us a measure of time and energy that we can devote to matters of real concern in our community yes be it ever so humble or ever so magnificent there's no place like home and in this modern world of mobile living who knows where home is going to be but if you plan to stay right where you are now ask yourself how adaptable is this house to my later years, regardless of what my needs may be? And can I really keep up with the work it demands? It's something to think about before you reach retirement age. 
Besides, now is a good time to look around and see if there is another spot you'd like better than the one you're in right now. It may take road searching and soul searching to find your own special place in the sun. <laughs>